I fought one hell of a fight. Are there any fighters in here? I mean, I fought such a good fight that when I look at what other people call a fight, what they call a fight is what I call normal. I fought my way up. I fought to get to work. I fought to stand. I fought to carry on. I fought to live. I fought to get out the bed. I fought with my fears, my anxieties, my insecurities. I fought with haters, liars, backbiters, and betrayers. And many times I laid in the bed. I couldn't go to sleep because I was fighting with myself. I fought. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Everyone took ownership of their mistakes. Everyone took ownership of the problems. Take ownership of your job, of your future, and take ownership of your life and lead. Lead yourself and your team and the people in your life. Lead them all to victory. Make your move before you're ready. We're in, instructed in life to walk by faith and not by sight. See, you want to really begin to stretch yourself. You want to become a risk taker. Most people won't do that. See, most people engage in low life living, low risk living. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. Then what else is there? Anybody who's not ever willing to risk will never do very much in this world. And in all probability, you'll end up being quite bored with your life. A couple of things that I said last night that I don't want you to forget is walking by faith is taking step one before you know what step two is. After a few times, you get a little more used to it and it's not quite as scary, but taking a step of faith is stepping out to do something when you don't know how it will be provided for that you believe with all your heart that it's what God has told you to do. Life is short and unpredictable. And so you want to begin to take some chances. You want to begin to challenge yourself and make it okay to fail and learn from your failures. Don't allow fear of failure to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You've got to die to leave here. You've got to make changes. You've got to say no. You've got to disappoint people. You got to walk away from some stuff. You have to. And so stepping away from things has felt much more dangerous to me than taking on five new things. Does anybody get it? Anybody out there, you get it. Trying to learn early the consequences of errors in judgment, poor behavior. And then try to learn from others that have gone down a, a disastrous road and sure enough they suffered the consequences and you say, wow, then I'm going to change direction because I don't want those consequences. That's called being doubly smart, learning from errors in judgment. A few simple disciplines practice every day. Now you're on the road to success. A few errors in judgment repeated and you can turn anything around. Once you see that you're suffering either early consequences or severe consequences, all you have to do now is shut down that route, pick another destination and start going that way with some easy disciplines that day by day gather momentum and now one success leads to another leads to another. Here's what we call that, disciplines, easy disciplines. All disciplines affect each other. Every discipline affects the rest, every lack of discipline affects the rest. What's interesting about success is starting a new discipline, a couple of new disciplines, and sure enough, once you've gained just a little bit of success in a couple of new disciplines, it'll inspire you to clean up the rest. It'll inspire you to fine tune all of your other disciplines. Each lack of discipline affects the rest. Solving problems, going from errors in judgment to easy disciplines that can change it all. And if you start that journey, it doesn't take long for new signs of success to appear. I got such great results that first year that I made these incredible changes, learning extra skills, putting together extra disciplines, working harder on myself and on my job. The early signs of the fact that I was going to arrive at a more positive destination, I was hooked. 
It didn't take but a few months, less than a year, and I was hooked for life. So when you begin to say, what is it that I want to leave? What contribution that I want to begin to make? What difference do I want to make in life? What is it that I want to do with the rest of the life that I have left? What chances I need to take? What risks do I need to begin to embrace? What fears do I need to step on? What areas of my life am I dead right now? What dreams? You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. That's, see, that's when people go out and, and strike out on their dreams. That's when people get out of relationships where they're dying together rather than growing together. See, you will, when you put yourself in that kind of situation, I'm reminded of, of two frogs that, that were hopping down the road and they fell into a bottle of milk. And one was hopping up and down for a while and he drowned. He just gave up. But this other frog just kept on kicking. He wouldn't give up. He just kept on kicking. And pretty soon he churned that milk into butter and he walked on out. <laughs> I ask you to start that same journey. Let your new skills, new disciplines affect all of the rest. You really won't be happy if you don't produce. Six-sevenths of our life was to be devoted to labor and work, to produce, to produce a work of art, to produce a good family, to produce an enterprise. That's the essence of life in its best form first, is to be a producer. What is the reason for the seed and the soil and the sunshine and the rain and the seasons of life and its miracle? What's the reason for all of that? Here it is in a nutshell for your notes. To see what you can do with it. We've got books to read and we've got classes to attend and we've got, you know, things to do and things to learn. And if you put it all together, you can have not only your health, but your fortune. You know, why not see what you can do with what you've been handed? As basic as seed and soil and sunshine and rain. Here's what all of us have the miracle and it's almost godlike in its potential. The ability to recreate. Only God can create the sunshine, the rain, the seasons, the miracle of life. But here's what humans can do. Recreate those components into a harvest by planting the seed, reaping the rewards in the harvest. We call that recreation. To recreate, to take your hours and your energy and your life and a bit of skill and create, actually recreate a career, a future, possibilities, fortune, recreate. And that changed my life. It was Oliver Wendell Holmes who said that once a person's mind is expanded with an idea, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. So some of you are going to experience a breakthrough. Some of you are going to go back and look at your dreams and brush them off. Whatever goal that you have in mind, I want that to be a goal that will challenge you. Something that will make you stretch. It was Osborne who said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it? Whatever it is, bring it back out there. How are you going to do it? That will come to you in due time. See, you don't get in life what you want, ladies and gentlemen. You get in life what you are, not what you want. And see, the good news is that we can always become more by working to develop ourselves. You've got to begin to take a look at your life and look at where are you right now? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What gives your life a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy? What does a full, rich life mean to you? What is it that you could love doing seven days a week? Think about that. That takes an incredible psychology. But in that psychology, we bump onto limits, and that's what you got to shift. And if your psychology is solid, then you got to say, where are the skills I'm missing? Because that's equally important. And you won't be happy if you aren't really extending yourself. Because here's really the goal of the human adventure. The full development of all your potential. Why not see how far you can go, how much you can earn, how much you can share, how much you can give. Why not see what all you could be? That's why at my age I'm still working, traveling the world, doing what I've done for all these years. Is to see what else I can become. How much stronger could I become? How much more refined could I be in my working with business partners and all the rest? Why not go for that ultimate challenge on and on as far as you can take it as far as you can friendship is one of the greatest support systems in the world nourish it protect it look after it develop it to the best of your ability next is your heritage keep your heritage alive that's what's made america great 
is a combination of a variety of heritages from all over the world. People have been coming from all the countries of the world to America, bringing with them their gifts. Gift of business ethics, gift of government, gift of music. Have you ever found yourself stuck in one of life's storms? And no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it seems that you can't make any headway. So many times the storms in our life, we didn't prepare for them, we didn't plan for them, we didn't ask for them, we didn't even cause them, they just suddenly happen. I want to talk to us this morning about hidden blessings in the storms of life. Each of us this morning is in either one of three situations. You are either headed towards a storm or you are just coming out of a storm or you are in a storm right now. But whatever your situation, God is in control. Storms come suddenly, but God is not surprised. I still believe that things can turn around for me. I still believe that this is not my final position. I still believe that my family can get better. I still believe that if I lose this job, there is another job for me. I still believe that my marriage is not over. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to keep your hope. Clap somebody and say, I believe. Is there anything you believe in that you'll sweat for, that you'll work for, that you'll labor for, that you'll commit yourself to? Is there anything that you love other than yourself? Just because you lost a job, don't stop trusting that God is my provider. Sometimes you have to go through something to really get your insight, to find out who you really are, to find out what you really got, to find out that you're tougher than you thought you were, to find out that you can do more than you thought you could do. Through my eyesight, I connect with that which is around me, not that which is within me. And sometimes I cannot be delivered by that which is around me. I can only be delivered by that which is within me. If I look around me, I see circumstances. If I look in me, I see hope. So sometimes in order to really get your focus, you have to shut down your eyesight to build up your insight. Shut your eyes to what you see and turn on your insight to what you believe. You can't help victims when you see yourself as a victim. You have to announce your recovery to yourself. You got to command yourself, get up out of this hospital bed and start to move it. Clarity. Because when you get in a storm, you become real clear of what matters and what does not. When you get in a storm, you're not trying to say, oh my God, let me get my Gucci bag. No, no, no. When you're in a storm, you get clarity as to what matters. Your priorities come into view when you're in a storm. So if you can't control something and you can't get control of it, you have to at least embrace what you can. There's only so much you can do and you cannot completely eliminate it. But you can't control it, so why are you going to worry about it? Why are you going to stress about it? If there's something that's completely beyond your control, you've got to detach from it and not let yourself get stressed about it. And you devise and you find will and them. You will find your freedom. They look at the most successful men and women of the world and they found that they had like seven 
eight things in common and one of the things they all had in common was a routine. They are obvious. There are written. I got up other day like at three o'clock in the morning and I woke up and I was just walking around like I was like I am so straight. I am straight body said and you are not straight. I said would you stay and not straight. He said because you wake up without an alarm clock. You wake up yourself and so if you were tried your body wouldn't let up get if you were tried your body would you make you look to see and what your motivation you are got to ask what drive did drive it what guide what it was move it was repeat behind what's the reason behind it was what the uh, purpose behind it was harming what i am saying that i just a circle as action i tell so the reason why you cannot get up at 4 o'clock at the morning it because you don't have that thing driving that pushing you say no that alarm clock and alarm are not suit zone how can i wake up and early in the morning thank you for watching like share and subscribe